Hello and a warm welcome to our series of special conversations which we are conducting in the run up to the Independence Day special with the heads of the institutes and the heads of the ministries. In today's episode, we have the Secretary to the Government of India from the Ministry of Environment and Forests. I welcome Mr. Rameshwar Prasad Gupta on the program. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, so my first question to you is that when you look at uh, the achievements of the ministries, uh, ministry in the last few decades, uh, how has been the journey? I would say it has been a very interesting journey for the ministry. Earlier when we were at a development at a very low level, the environment, pollution and climate change wasn't even heard. Climate change of course is a very recent phenomena. Pollution of course has started making its impact on different aspects. We were also losing the forest, wildlife was also dwindling. But if we look at from 1980, the first major milestone which took place was in 1980 when Forest Conservation Act was enacted and it has really helped in increasing the forest cover and reduction in the forest <coughs> area which was happening at a very rapid pace. And the philosophy was changed from forest conservation to forest development and it has yielded very good result. Next thing which I would say which came about was the enactment of Environment Protection Act. Before that, we had a separate acts for air pollution, water pollution, but looking at environment in a very comprehensive manner, as an ecosystem which comprises of the earth, air, water, and the flora and fauna associated with it, we started looking at the environment from 1986 onwards in a very comprehensive manner. Then some changes were made in Wildlife Act in 2006, particularly with regard to decreasing population of tigers. And I am very happy to say that today, India is the country which contains most of the tigers of the world. Our increase in the tiger population has been phenomenal and we roughly have about 3000 tigers in the wild today. Then if I very specifically look at during last few years, then climate change has, brought, has put India in the, in the international forum at a very important place. We negotiated Paris Agreement on climate change and our commitment for climate change was manifest when Honorable Prime Minister, he declared that India would be going for about 175 gigawatt of renewable energy by 2022. Right. So those are the things on which we, I look at this journey has been a very interesting and fantastic one. There are challenges ahead because as the development takes place, it puts more pressure and resources of the, from the environment, they are, they come under pressure. So we have to change our strategy, go for recycling, reduction in the natural resources for our use and reusing them. Right. So our strategies will have to change. So the government is working on the strategies, how to make the system more robust, but uh, any strategy towards uh, environment becomes successful when there is an involvement of all the stakeholders. And when I say all the stakeholders, it means the government, the community, the people, so how do you really raise the awareness amongst the people as to uh, they, they become more sensitive towards uh, environment? See, I would say the sensitivity and the awareness and knowledge about the environment has over the years increased tremendously. There are, we are making the children right in the, from the school age aware of the, their responsibility towards environment. Because environment protection and environment uh, promotion, that's not only a responsibility of the government, but it comes, it should come from the cities and their daily actions, they should be environmentally friendly. The use of resources, for example, water, we must be conscious that water is a very precious commodity, it's, it's a very limited commodity and we must learn to limit the use of the water, then reuse it, some of the, for example, in the flushes. In the flush, we can use the water which had been already used for in the wash basin. 
So these are some of the things which uh, every citizen and then the industry, agriculture I would say, agriculture uses lot of water and there is tremendous scope for reduction in the water use in agriculture. Other countries they are using almost one fourth of the water for same crop which we are using four times of the water. So there is lot of uh, uh, sensitivity and uh, which is required in our use of the natural resources. Right. Civil society plays a very important role. Then what has come to our aid is the technology. Now there are technologies, there are starts up, the institutions, they are developing new and new technologies which help us in recycling the old material which has been used. Right. So that uh, we have to promote them. And government's ro uh, role is to put up a policy framework which enables the technological development which helps us in environmental protection, reuse, recycling, as well as minimizing the uh, fresh resources which are, which are required. Right. But uh, Mr. Gupta, when you talk about the, the optimal usage of water because it's a precious natural resource, also many times uh, people say that how do you ensure a good quality of water? Quality is also a very big issue. So how does the government really plan to ensure the quality of good water? See, government has already formed the Ministry of <coughs> uh, Jal Sakti. Mm. So government uh, is looking at water as a, in a very holistic manner. Earlier, the hydropower was one thing and dams and the uh, reservoirs were looked after by another ministry. Now there is a, we have to look at the requirement of water, our availability of water which sector gets how much, how much do we exploit from our uh, groundwater and how do we recharge it. We have to ensure not only we minimize and optimize our use of water, but whatever water we get from the nature that is conserved, our aquifers are uh, recharged and used in a manner that we do not deplete it to a very large extent. Right. I think th there is a need that more and more water conservation efforts which government has already taken up, community should involve itself in it and uh, the make the effort successful. Since we uh, have a separate ministry altogether now for water conservation and water quality and other s aspects related to water, so where does your ministry now figure as far as contribution towards water is concerned? Our contribution or our role as far as water is concerned, it comes from two things. First of all, any pollution of water that concerns us and that is where our role comes in. So the industry which uses the water, that is where we play our role and try to see that first of all they limit their use of water, they use only to a very optimal extent to the minimal extent which is necessary for their production processes. Number two, the effluent which they generate, that should be to the extent possible pollution free, it should be treated it should be able to be reused either in their own processes or if they can't use it because of the limitations of their processes, if they can't use it, then it should be in a position to be used by for gardening, for agriculture, if not for potable purposes. Okay. So that is where we play a role and of late we have also started seeing to it that the requirement of water, the industries come up in areas where the water is already not under the strain. Right. So that role also we play. Right. Maintenance of the water table and everything does come under no, that. That is under the purview of the other ministry, but the industries which are major water consuming industry, mm -hmm. they should not come up in areas where there is strain or stress on the already water table is stressed. That is what we play. But Mr. Gupta, what kind of a challenge is it when uh, you have to really tutor the industries that uh, not to come up with their entities in uh, water stress areas and at the same time you have to look uh, as an environment friendly uh, entity at the same time catering to the interests of the industry so that environment and industry both go hand in hand. What kind of a challenge is it really? Uh, I would say interesting rather than uh, being challenging, it's challenging okay. but it's also very interesting. See it also gives a role to the, uh, the technology which plays a major role. Now there are industries which are recycling their uh, total requirement of water. They are taking minimal amount of water earlier which we are taking 10, 20, 100 times. They have reduced their usage and have started recycling it. Right. So that is the way which uh, as the technology progresses, 
it helps us in optimizing our use of water and also in uh, recycling it and then it can be used for many other purposes. Right. So technology is uh, quite helpful as far as maintenance of uh, water is concerned, optimal usage of water is concerned. Let's take a break at this point of time and when we return we continue our conversation on the ambient air quality, air pollution, lots more on the other side. India Science is an internet-based science TV channel initiated by the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, implemented and managed by Vikyan Prasar. India Science on the URL www.indiascience.in is a bilingual channel with content in Hindi and English. It can be accessed on any internet-enabled device. This video platform is dedicated to science and technology knowledge dissemination with a strong commitment to spreading scientific awareness especially with Indian perspectives, ethos and cultural context. The India Science mobile app can be downloaded from the Google Play Store and Apple Store. Welcome back after the break and we are in conversation with the Secretary to the Government of India in the Ministry for Environment and Forest, Mr. R.P. Gupta. Mr. Gupta, talking about the air quality and uh, the air pollution is, is really becoming a serious issue as far as environment is concerned. Uh, what have been the major breakthroughs when you talk about improving the air pollution? Well, air pollution is attributed to many causes. If we see Delhi or the northern plain during, <coughs> during winter, we have the Delhi is the city which has the largest number of vehicles. The vehicle density here is really, I think, if I am not mistaken, then total number of vehicles in Delhi, they outnumber Chennai, Mumbai and Kolkata put together. So that is one region which is one of the major source. Another source is the industries around Delhi, which sometimes they use unclean fuel like furnace oil, pet coke, so those are the things. Construction industry, that generates a lot of air pollution. And during summer, for about 15 to 20 days or about a month, we have vegetable burning in Punjab, Haryana and Western UP, which also contributes quite a lot to air pollution in Delhi and in and around Delhi. Now, we are, we, we did a number of studies, found out what are different sources, and we have been taking action to control the emissions from those sources. On vehicle front, we have already in Delhi moved to a situation where only BS6 vehicles now would be permitted to be registered. Right. That will greatly reduce the pollution which is a portion to the transport sector. More and more people will have to use public transport, particularly metro and city bus services. Our bus services would have to go electric personal vehicle would have to go electric. On the industry front, we have stopped the use of furnace oil as well as pet coke which were dirty fuels and were contributing to air pollution right. and we are enforcing them very severely. Construction industry also, there are guidelines and regulations which are in place where the fugitive emissions which takes place particularly the dust that should be minimized and during winter when the air pollution crosses a certain level we close down the construction industry. Right. So these are on a stable burning front, government has been taking a lot of steps, central government and state governments put together. And the share of stable burning that has been going down and there has been a reduction in the stable burning in Punjab and Haryana. And I think we are going to see very good result. Apart from Delhi, government has launched a national clean air program for the whole of the country. We are monitoring the air quality, taking up the steps, strengthening our regulations, implementing them and enforcing them so that the air quality in any of the country, uh, city of the country that remains healthy and <coughs> it's, uh, it's friendlier to the people there. 
But like you said that uh, when the construction activity is on and during the winter season, we try and uh, put an end to the construction for a certain period. But how feasible is this option? Because in a developing nation where a lot of construction work has to happen all across the country, uh, and that for that brief period, the entire activity comes to a halt. So uh, are there any more alternatives by which the construction work can also be on? And at the same time, the air quality doesn't deplete. So how do you ensure that? See, the construction industry also has been changing. And I would say that the, the contribution or the pollution which earlier the con construction activities caused, that has also come down. Okay. Now they are they are taking the the builders, the construction industry themselves are taking measures, which reduces the air pollution. But I would say that still we have not come to a stage. Unlike advanced countries, where construction almost contributes nothing to the air pollution, mm -hmm. and there are prefabricated structures which are brought in. Those we have to move to those, and I am sure that as we go along then the technologies will improve, the air pollution due to construction will come down. But given the current situation where construction causes pollution, then we have to take measures. The health uh, and pollution, they are the major priority of the government and they will take the, f they will be the first in terms of the priority list. So whenever the, the level of pollution, air pollution has gone up, the construction industry or the other industry that will have to close down for a certain period and when the levels improve they are allowed. Uh, Mr. Gupta, uh, the world is going through uh, uh, a global pandemic and because of this COVID-19 infection, uh, what is the kind of correlation you draw with the environment because people do talk about the fact that uh, the corona uh, is, is an airborne uh, infection. And then when you talk about the improving air quality, how do you correlate the two then? Well, infections, I do not think Corona has much to do with as far as environment is concerned. It has much to do with our kind of lifestyle and the eating habits which we have. We have started much more interaction with the wildlife, with different kind of wildlife. And the viruses which we are confined to them, they have started crossing over to the uh, human From beings. animal to human. Exactly. That is that is what has happened in, uh, as far as Corona is concerned. There have been many diseases which have been airborne and we have been tackling them. So, Corona will also be tackled. But during this pandemic, what we have seen is people have seen the kind of environment, air and water which we can have. But we must also be conscious of the fact that the kind of air and water which we have seen that also requires a lifestyle which is extremely frugal. You have to contain your necessities, your requirements and probably that is not possible for a country like India. We, we are a developing nation and we need to uh, ensure that our people get a decent standard of living uh, which is comparable to the best in the world. And to that extent, there is it is inevitable that certain harm to the environment will be caused, but it is our responsibility. It is a collective responsibility which we have to see. Government will play its role through regulations, but we also cannot uh, ignore the development which is required. Right. But development will have to be environment friendly. Uh, we have to strike a very happy balance between the two. But uh, w what is the impact of the pandemic uh, you see on the environment generally as far as forests are concerned, as far as uh, water, air pollution, everything is concerned. Do you see any kind of implication because of the pandemic? Implication I see in terms of the future. People have become more aware of the, their responsibility towards environment. As far as forest is concerned, I do not think uh, environment has had this pandemic has had any impact on forest or any direct environment, direct impact on environment. Environment was indirectly affected that due to the lockdowns, the pollution levels came down. The number of that activities was a positive which side of it. I do not know whether that is a positive side because we paid a tremendous economic price for it. And number of people, they, they have gone below poverty line. They have, there have been stress on our sectors of different sectors of economy. People have lost their livelihood. They had to undergo a major misery in terms of migration. 
सो इकोनॉमिकली आई डू नॉट थिंक इट हैज बीन ए हैप्पी सिचुएशन इन्वायरमेंटली इनडायरेक्टली इट हैज बीन बट आई डू नॉट थिंक दैट इज ए सस्टेनेबल इन्वायरमेंटल सिचुएशन वी वुड लव टू गेट टू दैट इन्वायरमेंट बट विद ऑल द डिवलपमेंट विच वी रिक्वायर फॉर आवर पीपल सो एज यू से दैट वी नीड अ गुड बैलेंस बिटवीन डिवेलपमेंट and uh, environment i think that's uh, that's a big ch- a big challenge uh, let's take a break at this point of time when we return we come back on mo- more uh, with uh, mr rp gupta on the major achievements and the visions and the future goals of the ministry back in a moment India Science is an internet based science tv channel initiated by the Department of Science and Technology Government of India implemented and managed by Vigyan Prasar India Science on the URL www.indiascience.in is a bilingual channel with content in Hindi and English it can be accessed on any internet enabled device This video platform is dedicated to science and technology knowledge dissemination with a strong commitment to spreading scientific awareness especially with indian perspectives ethos and cultural context The India Science mobile app can be downloaded from the Google Play Store and Apple Store Welcome back after the break we are in conversation with the secretary to the government of India in the Ministry of Environment and Forest Mr RP Gupta. Uh Mr Gupta what are the future uh, uh, goals which you are looking at as far as the ministry is concerned? Ministry goal is number one first of uh, first thing which we have to focus and we are focusing on is that we increase our forest cover. Tree plantation should take place more and more and we will be coming out with steps which will encourage people without the fear of losing their land for more and more plantation which will we are not more concerned with the legal forest but we are more concerned and we should be more concerned with the tree cover which we have okay forest in terms of as the real forest right second priority for us is that the development we encourage the development but with environment friendliness so far there has been weaknesses from our side that we take too long for giving clearances for last 5 6 years this time period which in giving the clearances have been coming down tremendously we want to increase much uh, we want to decrease that time period further we want to make it much more business friendly but at the same time we would be quite conscious of the environmental requirement which the industry will have to meet we will be focusing more on the enforcement so it will be easier for the honest businessmen and industries to get their clearances and those who are having their processes and are conscious of that their environmental responsibility they will find it much more easier to do the business here and those who are polluting and are violating the norms they will probably find themselves in a difficult position so we are going to strike a a balance between we make it easier for them at the same time we expect and enforce the environmental regulations right. now for example in the earlier years we used to hear stories about how sanctuaries have been encroached and uh, how there have been constructions or mining inside a sanctuary area so how do you ensure that all that now doesn't happen because enough there is an enough uh, a uh, legal framework to ensure all that but apart from that in terms of spreading awareness amongst the people uh, what are the kind of initiatives which the government of india is taking see as far as mining or different activities uh, within sanctuary is concerned first of all let me inform you our sanctuary area has been increasing the national park area has been increasing okay and that has been reflected in terms of the increased number of tigers it requires the whole ecosystem right for the tiger to survive and when its number is increasing Uh, it means our conservation efforts have been extremely successful right that is the first part second part is mining inside the sanctuary jo forest area mining is one industry which you have to do where the mineral is available unfortunately it is unlike the plant 
or the infrastructure like road which you can shift to other places mineral you you have to find where it is Absolutely. and if it is within the forest and sanctuary you have to get it from there but what we have to see is that to the extent possible if we can avoid mining inside those areas we must do it we must r reduce requirement of our minerals we can recycle the the products in which minerals have been earlier used recycle them so that the fresh mineral requirement goes down right but if it is inevitable then it must be done in a manner that it is least harmful and damaging to the environment as well as the f uh, forest area but what is the biggest uh, challenge you see because you've already explained how the government is investing on technology how you want to balance our development because uh, uh, not doing things at the cost of the business interest as well but at the same time uh, taking care of the fact that uh, we don't go against the environment so what are the challenges in the years to come challenges are the those of the development when development takes place it naturally puts more pressure on our natural resources right and forest environment is the one which provides all natural resources so we put more pressure on it so those are the challenges the challenges again are in terms of finding the um, a suitable technology inventing newer newer processes which helps us in what we call the 3r reuse reduce and recycle right so be th that is the thing which i foresee these three things are going to increase and reduce our requirement of the fresh natural sources which we, which we take from the nature right uh, in terms of the image of the ministry uh, a lot has been written about uh, how the ministry has been in the earlier years but in terms of the image makeover if i purely ask you how has the ministry transformed in terms of publicity campaigns in terms of the image which it project projects as compared to other ministries so what is what is the kind of steps which you all have taken i think we have been uh, lacking in that respect we have not been projected our projecting our work which we have been doing okay. both in terms of how we are making it easier for the honest business people to do business give faster clearances also in terms of enforcing and enacting newer regulation which are required hazardous waste management rules the uh, emission trading then uh, extended producer producer responsibility for waste management those are the fresh regulations which we have come up and we will be now uh, focusing more on their effective enforcement right so that will that's how we we would like to see that development takes place but not at the cost of environment uh in terms of uh, improving the env environment water quality in terms of improving the air quality this independence day uh, what is the kind of message you would like to give uh, the audience well i would uh, request or the the citizens of india to be more aware and more kind to the environment reduce your requirement of natural resources water air they are the thing which we have to leave to the future generation so reduce your requirement and use the product which have been more environmental friendly absolutely please abandon the use of plastic to the extent possible go for much more environment friendly jute and other materials which are used for packaging and carriages so that the environment which the message which i would like to give to the people of india It was a pleasure talking to you, Mr. Gupta. And as he just explained, that environment is is all about a self responsibility, and all the stakeholders uh, perhaps have to come together to build and nurture the environment because environment is the basis of the future. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank, Thank you. you once again, Thank and you wish you all a very happy Independence Day.